Hello, I'm Harry Harding and welcome to my new online series. These are troubling and uncertain times for actors and indeed for the theatre industry. So I thought whilst we're all locked down, I would keep in touch with my fellow creatives by talking about our favourite subject. Ourselves! In this series, I'll be interviewing fellow actors and creatives on everything from their favourite roles to dream castings to funny backstage mishaps and more. But before we proceed, please don't swear and please don't say Macbeth. Oh, hang on a minute. I just... Oh. <sighs> Cue the titles. this week is actor Josie Melton. Josie has submersed herself in local theatre companies ever since graduating from Middlesex University with a BA Honours degree in acting. From this she has gained the best kind of experience from performing with the likes of The Company of Players, Shattered Windscreen and Sense of Place theatre companies, playing diverse, interesting and complex characters. Josie has been a part of two winning teams at Hartford Theatre Week. In 2016, she played Annette in The God of Carnage with the Barn Theatre, winning the overall festival and Audience Appreciation Award. And again in 2019, playing Catherine Parr in Six Dead Queens and an Inflatable Henry with the Company of Players, coming second overall and again winning the Audience Appreciation Award. Her proudest moment came when she played the role of Paulina Skelton in Shattered Windscreen Theatre Company's production of The Wicked Lady at the Minack Theatre in 2017. She returned with this company in 2019, playing Aldonza in I, Don Quixote. Josie made her off West End stage debut in 2018, playing Annalise in the Frontier Trilogy with Sense of Place Theatre Company. Josie, welcome to the show. Um, please don't swear and please don't say Macbeth. Macbeth. <laughs> okay, um, good. So, um, first of all, how are you? Like, how how are you doing? How are you coping in, in isolation? I'm, I'm fine. Like, this, I'm actually really enjoying this new way of living. Yeah. I, I quite like having things quite quiet, slow paced and... Yeah, I've, I've adapted maybe a little too well to it, perhaps. I think I'm a bit nervous about when things are going to go back to normal because I just, yeah, quite like it. Being at home with family, it's quite nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what about, um, what about any theatrical projects? Have you been, haven't you been doing some, some online play readings? 
Yeah, so with um, Shining Screen, every Tuesday or Wednesday, we basically get some plays together and yeah, the cast just gets distributed as it normally would. So the first couple, we were doubling up on roles and a lot of accents were flying around, which was uh, really interesting. But obviously over this, you can just have a laugh and just do anything silly and it doesn't really matter because we're all just there listening, Mm. you know, just thinking of ways to fill the time. So yeah, we've done, I've done about two and I listened last week, which was nice just to listen to people you do plays with all the time as if you're just watching them. So obviously you're watching them on screen and it's it's like you're kind of back in the theatre. So we've got another one this evening, which I get to do my Southern American accent, which oh, I love sorry. doing. What, what, what is the play? Um, Give it a plug. It's uh, it's two handles. I can't actually remember the names of them. I'm really sorry. Oh. but uh, <laughs> You heard it here first exclusively. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. So we get the script quite late. So, um, yeah, we don't get much time to go over it because I think the more it's fresh in your mind, the better it is. So... Yeah. So yeah, no, that's yeah. been really, really fun just to see everybody, to keep doing all the play reads has been really nice. So yeah, it's been a really good one just to keep it going and yeah, just see everyone more than you actually normally would because you normally get to see everyone about every time they do a show. So you might not see everyone for a few months and then you can that's see true, the show. Yeah. But this week, you know, it's every week, something different, have a bit of a chat and you get to catch up with people. So it's been really, really lovely. Really nice. Good, yeah. good. Okay, so... um Let's talk a bit about, about you. Um, well, that's why you're here. Um, yeah. So um, I'd like to start with um, uh, your training. So you trained mm-hmm. in acting at Middlesex University. Um, yeah. Um, so what's, what's your fondest memory of your, of your training um, and, and why? Or maybe not your fondest, your, your, um, uh, might, not, might, might be the opposite of that. But is there anything that jumps to mind? Yeah, there was one project. There's a couple of projects I did in my last year, actually. There was one where we basically got the whole class together and we were put into people, into groups that we wouldn't normally work with. And it was basically, we were given free reign. Just do whatever you want. And you can use anything you want. So we, we were... Dangerous. Our rehearsal space, I know it's really dangerous, but it's so much fun. Our rehearsal space was a massive hangar. It used to be like an old air hangar or something. So what we did is we got loads of scaffolding and we built this huge set out of scaffolding. And we basically did the story of like when you're born, how the media affects you. So we had, we used different music from like the Prodigy to just really random stuff. And we were all dressed in white and we managed to like throw paint and like, you know, when you crush down crayons and everything, we had it like powder everywhere. Wow. And we would just, as we were going through it, you'd either be rolling around in it or you'd, you know, you'd fight and you'd get it thrown at you and everything. So you were basically, depending on how much you were affected by media, as it were, was dependent on how much coverage you had all over your body. And it was so bizarre. And at the end, we had this thought of like basically turning it around on the audience. So we all just got, got a camera from somewhere and took a picture of the audience. And after each performance, we would put the pictures of the audience faces just so people could see and so we yeah. could see what their reaction I love that. Used faces. A lot of the audience were just like, I don't really know what I've just... <laughs> but it was interesting for us to, to watch people and then obviously have that little snapshot of what we were doing. That was, that was one of my fondest things because we were just literally given free reign. It was like, this is your last project. Have at it. Go crazy. Yeah. And we made a, made a big mess as well. It was a bit like art actually as well. But that was Live really art. interesting. Yeah, it was yeah. actually, yeah. Yeah, you, and then my you don't often get free reign nowadays to do, do you? No, because it's also always, you know, you can't, if it's scripted, you've got to have the rights and you can't really deviate from anything. But, yeah. and, you know, improvisation doesn't always work as well. And luckily we were all Very kind true. of feeding off each other. And, yeah, it strangely worked. And we got a lot of kudos for doing that, actually. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. All the characters you have played, um, mm-hmm. there have been a lot. Uh, who would you say was your favourite and why? I thought you might ask this, but I've been thinking about it for a while. I've looked at all the plays. There, there are some plays that I maybe, I, I love doing. A lot of the plays I absolutely loved. But the best character I've played was Hallie Jackson from The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. Oh, yes. 
So it was a Western and she, you know, when you just read a character and you just think, I want to play that for all the right reasons. She's, she got heart. She was funny. Obviously the accent, it was the deep South American accent, which as I said, I love doing. Yeah. Um, but this, the story of the, the play, I I, I mean, I still love it to this day because it's relevant then and it's relevant now. You know, the whole racism and like, you know, the power struggle between people and everything, how someone thinks somewhere's their territory and nothing will happen. But she was just at the heart of the story. She wasn't, she wasn't a tomboy and she wasn't a girly girl, but the men respected her. And I think that's what was so important. She had this tavern, she was in charge, but she did fall in love, but not in a girly way. She wasn't going to give up who she was or you know, be the second. She was always after a partnership and that's what she found. So that's what I loved about that love story, that it wasn't girly. She put him in his place quite often. Yeah. She had some of the best yeah. dialogue in the show. She was so funny. And you just got to be a bit gritty with her mm. and you didn't have to, you know, pretty and, you know, flounce about. You know, she got one scene where she got in a nice dress, but even then in this nice dress, she's having a massive full-on argument with somebody. Mm. And that's what I love, her passion and her her love for the people that surround her. Like she'll do anything. She will do absolutely anything to protect the people in her life. And she won't compromise on anything. If she doesn't agree with you, she'll tell you. And likewise, if she makes mistakes, she'll also own up to it. And that's what I loved about her. There was just so much to her. I just loved her heart and her funny and yeah, her morals. That's what I really loved about her. I'd play her again in a heartbeat. I really would. She's so fierce and yeah. so passionate. It's yeah. just a, she's a good role model for, without sounding too, you know, thrust it in your face. But she was a good role model for girls. She really is. Yeah. You know, she really lifts off the page. And hopefully, you know, for people that saw it, you know, they kind of, they liked her. They, I wanted people to like Hallie because when I first read her, I loved her. I thought she was brilliant. Such a good female character. Well written as well. And that's not always the case sometimes but yeah loved yeah. it would love it. <laughs> yeah yeah oh, yeah no i yeah I, I remember that production and and uh yeah. Your part. yeah um yeah she was a force to be reckoned with she was. <laughs> yeah she really was no i loved everything about her and i i think because um i was quite lucky because uh we actually know the guy that played the original um burt barracoon when they did it in the west end and he came to see it and even I got a good compliment from him where he just said, nailed it. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> wow. You've been a part of, um, of two winning teams at Hartford Theatre Week. So there was the Barn mm -hmm. Theatre's The God of Carnage and there was the Carnage yeah. Players, uh, Six Dead Queens and an Inflatable Henry, um, both of which won the Audience Appreciation Award. Um, mm -hmm. But what I wanted to ask you was, there's there's an interesting backstory um, to the latter, isn't there? It wasn't originally um, supposed to be even be in the competition. No. What's the story there? No. So the original, because the original script, it was very short, really, really short. So it didn't even, so when we did God of Carnage, it was about an hour and 15. So we were just, because it's obviously, it's not a one act festival, it's mm. a two act festival. So with God of Carnage, we just about made the criteria. So for Six Queens in its original form, it wasn't even an hour. So we couldn't put it forward. Mm. And I think maybe the um, subjects, the themes that the Queens did, maybe it was not, quite appropriate shall we say um because it is completely absurd theater that's what it is that's why it was so good to do um so yeah so then it came to our run of six queens at cops we did it we even added on an extra performance because we sold out and so many people wanted to come and see it which was lovely and then so we were done and dusted with six queens that was it we put it to bed took down all the scenery we had again we had scaffolding destroyed everything and I think it was about a week later, uh, Darren, the director, got a phone call from Hartford Theatre Week saying that one company had dropped out. Would we be able to put our show back together and take it and fill their spot? So you know, I went on all, all the queens. I mean, the six queens to get back together. Obviously, we had the musicians. We wanted the exact same lighting and sound and everything. And whether we could actually move it to a much bigger stage 
because you know cops is this big Hartford theatre this big intimate um yes intimate yes so but somehow we managed to get it together we had one rehearsal before Hartford Theatre Week um Ashley who played Jane Seymour had never been to Hartford Theatre she was working the day of so she didn't even get the rehearsal on the stage she'd never been there before she literally got there we walked around walked around the stage so she knew where to come in and out from and we just said look if you get stuck just look at one of us and we'll help you and she nailed it as she always does um so yeah that's kind of how it we weren't supposed to be there for whatever reason and then we came in at the last minute we managed somehow out of the whole team just to put it together and i, I think we went on to win like three awards i think and honestly i've never heard an audience reaction to that show like that before it was we were the end of the show is a is a song that we all do it's the same song we do at the beginning and we were all just laughing and singing because we couldn't hear each other because the audience reaction was just it's nothing i've ever heard before and it was really emotional i came off stage i cried <laughs> in the dressing room for quite some time i was just like oh my god what's just happened because as you're doing the show you can't really tell how people are gonna react to it because it is so out there it's so crazy you know, it's, it's got everything in there. I mean, it had physical theatre in there. It's got absurd comedy. It's rude. It's got a game of Pictionary in it. It's got sword fighting. It has a dance to, I think it's Little Mix and all our own vocals as well. I'm not a singer, so that's quite terrifying in itself. But well, I was going to ask you if you would, wouldn't mind doing the end song for us now. I mean, <clears throat> <try. laughs> um, no, I mean, it's, it's one of those things of something that wasn't supposed to happen and it ends up being one of the greatest moments that you have on stage because yeah. it wasn't there and then it was and the reaction was just absolutely amazing. I mean, the one you want at Theatre Week is the audience appreciation because they're the one that comes to see you and for them absolutely. all to vote something that was such a late entry and it was such, it was, I guess it was a bit of a risk to put it on because it could go one way or the other, but thankfully people just accepted it for what it was and yeah we had such a great time doing it it was so much fun yeah. also been involved in two minac productions so yeah. there was the wicked lady <laughs> and yeah. i don don't quixote am i saying that right i don't quixote yeah yeah um which you obviously you're very proud of quite rightly so um now yeah. having never been to the Minac myself as as either a participant or just a member of the audience just yeah what is it um that's so special about it I mean why why is performing there um like you know so meaningful to so many people it, it's such a girly thing to say but it is truly a magical place something happens down there that is just so unique and it, it's one of those things, it is a privilege to be down there because not everyone is lucky enough to get the opportunity to go down there. Mm. That's why I feel every year, I, I never take it for granted. I spend as much time as I can, just even just sometimes just standing on the stage or just being in the, just being in there. It's just so special. It's really hard to describe because unless you've, you've kind of been there or seen it, you know, when you see it in, internet pictures it doesn't do it justice at all once you stand there and once you stand on the stage and look up at the audience i mean there's like i don't even know how many is in the audience like a thousand and it's literally like that because you change your performance as well because you're everything's you know you're so used to performing this way but everything's up and it's big and you know the people at the top want to be able to get the show that the person in the front's getting and so you just become this different kind of person when you're down there and the shows have to be bigger they have to be more spectacular because they've come to see a spectacle and if you know you've got the sea and the cliffs behind you and if you're not going to use that backdrop what's the point <laughs> you know and um, one of our performances of Don Quixote it was thrashing with rain I mean the, the sea was just coming up and over and the wind was like blowing down our set and all this kind of but you keep going and you just you keep going because the audience are there, they're wrapped up in their anoraks and their umbrellas and, you know, their blankets and everything. You're there and, you know, sometimes hardly anything, just putting on this show because everyone just wants to be there for the same reason. And I, 
I can't really describe what that reason is. It's just something that's, I don't know. It's just a, it's just a feeling in, in me that makes that place so special. Yeah. And that sounds really cheesy, <laughs> but I, I can't explain it. And the first time I was down there, did my first performance, I made sure my mum and dad were in the audience because I wanted them to see me do it for the first time because they knew how much it meant to me. And I remember at the end, I found Darren, who uh, we did Miss Julie with, and I ran around the back, and because he knew how important it was, he because obviously we have to go right around the bottom uh, to get to, you know, off stage basically. And I just remember just running and just hugging him, and I just burst out crying because I was like, I've done it, I've actually done it. And then each performance after that just becomes more and more special because now, like I've done the first one, and I get to keep doing it. And then I go back two years later, and I get to do it again in an even bigger production with a part that I absolutely loved and you know got to dance I got to again sing I don't know why they keep giving me bits to sing I don't know but um but you're doing it this time round you know when we did it last year it was we had that big storm that came in and we were literally fighting the elements screaming to be heard and um our last performance we actually only made it halfway through and we had to pull it because it was getting too dangerous to perform and we all so it was the intermission and we knew it had been we was like well this isn't going to continue Minak had pulled it it's very rare that Minak pull a show and they did they were like we can't continue so literally the whole cast just ran back on stage and even the audience were on their feet applauding us and just they were getting battered by the storm but because they knew what we tried to do and we would we were prepared to continue and get it to the end but everyone was just on their feet, cheering, you know, again, crying, as I always do. <laughs> I just seem to cry. All you do is end you crying. I just cry at everything. I cried at the end of Miss Julie, cried at everything. Um, but that's, that's what I mean. That's what makes it so special because it makes you feel things that I can't describe, mm. you know. And that, again, was one of the most amazing things. We didn't get to finish this show and we only got about, yeah we didn't get to do all performances which was such a shame because of the weather but that's again why it's such a privilege because you could go down there and you can have bad weather all week and there's a possibility you might not even get a chance to perform so it I don't think that's ever happened but it's always likely so yeah you just have to as soon as you get down there you just have to absorb absolutely everything because you don't know hopefully I will continue to go down there but you never know but um at the moment it's still the best thing ever best place to ever go it's to watch to or perform. that that first performance of the wicked lady was yeah the proudest moment theatrically yeah definitely because yeah. i got to watch so i was part of the opening as well and then um, where the stage is there's just a little raised bit and i got to do my first bit and i just had to stand there and look out at the audience in this pose and i was so pleased that i had that moment just to Take it all in. Yeah. I don't get too shell shocked before I had to remember my first line. Um, what a but great yeah, just look at debut as well. I know. Stand there. Yeah, I know. I mean, no one was looking at me. They were all looking at the action that was going down on the stage. But for no, me, they it were was looking just... at you. <laughs> but it was it was a moment of of calm before. Okay, get your head in the game and just well, the do the show. Storm. <laughs> <laughs> literal storm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah no, nothing will ever top that you'll you'll do big shows and have great reactions but for me personally performing on that stage for the very first time hands down best thing ever yeah well it sounds like <laughs> a, a terrifying but magical experience. <laughs> um, okay so finally um mm -hmm. do you have any um exciting projects in the future that you'd like to um, plug or talk about, or perhaps projects in the future that were going to happen, but now you're not sure that they, they might happen, um, or just stuff that you were planning to do next year that you know mm -hmm. you might not actually have the, the role yet, but for you, with, oh, well, I'd like to do that. Yeah, um, well, the last kind of uh, big show I did was, uh, not the last one, but I did a show up in London with um, A Sense of Place mm. Theatre Company. And ever since we did the trilogy up there, 
Frontier Trilogy, we've wanted to do something again. Uh, excuse dog. Um, <laughs> we want to do another show. So we have been actively looking. So obviously, uh, Georgina Bennett is the producer and you know the founder of Sense of Place. So we've always been looking to do something, and we we really did want to do something either this year or next year. And obviously now it's really uncertain so we were just looking at different scripts we were thinking of maybe doing like a two-hander and uh, myself and her doing something or trying to get another cast you know a big cast piece because it, it really worked last time and looking at different venues in kind of off west end that's what we like to do the kind of you know the above pub theaters because it was such a great experience so we didn't have anything planned but we were planning on doing something um at the moment, I don't really know what the future holds on that. Obviously, we'll still be involved with the barn cops and shattered windscreen. I'm hoping Minak next year, hopefully, if, if all goes well. Not sure. But, yeah, everything. I was taking a break anyway this year just because I've done quite a lot back to back. Um, maybe that wasn't the best idea because now I don't know when anything will be back, which is really, really sad. Um, yeah. But hopefully when things are back up and running sense of place hopefully we'll be able to get something and do that again because it was it was really good to actually put something out there yourself rather than going forward for something that someone else has put forward you have to audition for something you know us finding a script and us putting it on that kind of thing that's what I'd like to do yeah we'll just have to wait and see if that but fingers crossed it will maybe towards the latter end of next year maybe but yeah hopefully sense of place Fingers crossed. Well, that's certainly <laughs> something to look forward to. Um, Hopefully. And I, I think, yeah, I th I'm, 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 uh, yeah, I'm optimistic about the future. I think 2021 is a is a realistic um, time when you know we'll all be back to work again. Um, Hopefully. And on the stage. Fingers crossed. I miss it a lot. <laughs> I do miss it. Even just going to watch things, I'm really missing it. So yeah. that's why it's good all the stuff that's going on online at the moment. Everything's really, I don't think you people realise how much you need theatre and you need the arts. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've been watching loads that have been on YouTube and everything. And it's made me really grateful that that has been shown. Yeah. I've loved watching that and seeing things that I didn't get the chance to go and see live for whatever reason. So yeah, fingers crossed we can come back and I think everyone will be a bit more appreciative when we all do. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, well, f thank you very much, Josie, for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. You've been, been a lovely, lovely guest. Um, I've very much enjoyed your answers. Um, I certainly wasn't expecting some of them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's been it's been wonderful to talk to you, um, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Bye bye. If you would like to be a guest on my show, then private message me your interest on Facebook or Instagram. Or if you're lucky enough to have my telephone number, you can send me a WhatsApp message.